SalonGalaxy.com here with Vivian McKinder, who won a Lifetime Achievement Award, and it's well-deserved. How do you feel all about that? Uh, excited Sorry. and uh, honored, truly honored, because when I think of the extraordinary people that I follow, they're pretty amazing. It's all good stuff here. And let me ask you something. Were you surprised by any of the winners, or, or were you you're feeling it? It was accurate, you know. What did you think when, when you saw the winners? How did you feel? Um, yes, uh, I was surprised by some of the categories. Um, I was a judge, and um, mm -hmm. ironically, some of the ones that I judged, the ones that I thought should win, didn't. So, I don't know. I don't know what the other judges were looking for. I always look for beauty, number, f number one, um, originality. Sure and um, a beautiful story and if it's not beautiful then I don't care how clever it is I think it has to be beautiful and expensive looking and it should be fashion not some silly nonsense so yeah, there were some surprises and, and I, I but I you know think that it's marvelous that everyone got this far because the journey to get here is really where the lesson is okay. and as lovely as this this is my life's lessons won't fade and won't gather dust this will there's there's a lot not to invalidate it, but you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of wisdom right here. Now, I, I hear you talk a lot about the future. What's in the future for you? Future for me, um, continuing with what I'm doing with um, Head Designer TV and uh, all my beautiful guests who are just sharing their pearls of wisdom with me, which is marvelous. So continue to do that and hopefully have a holiday. That'd be really nice. We don't There's get a gorgeous <laughs> husband who's over there. We don't get many holidays in this business. I'm in this business a long time, and I haven't got many holidays at all. Uh, with Hair Designer TV, I don't know when you're going to get a holiday. What, what you're doing with that? And the goal with that is uh, strictly education. Um, but what are you thinking with that? How far you want to take that? Well, you know, it's pioneering because it's a whole new frontier, sure and the model of education has truly changed over the years. Mm -hmm. So I think that while it's marvelous to have live events and live workshops, I think there's something that um, the websites can offer which is more dynamic and more um, instant. And you can go and have a five, ten minute fix every single day, 24 hours a day. So that opportunity and that flexibility allows you to do more so I, I think we're at the beginning of, uh, of a revolution. So for myself, um, education and entertainment and um, preserving, I'm, I've, I'm very invested in preserving the legacy of our craft. Mm. And you know, I spent three months just researching um, archival footage and finding all these amazing, um, just amazing images that, stuff, yeah. Yeah, that people had created. And how sad to have them you know, in a vault versus being seen because really it's, it's all been done before there's nothing really new uh, you know there's a funny thing I saw uh, Fatima up here and she said that was my drape do you do things like that ever uh, these days or, or is, it, is it all uh, you know, scheduled how do you do it um, what you mean in the creative process or coming up with ideas? Coming up with ideas like that. Oh. Do you come up with ideas that way now or is, yes. is that is that blasé? No, no. I, I, I think you're only as good as the last idea that you had. And, you know, it's easy to copy. It's hard to be original. So um, I no thought question. tonight Nicholas French's work was exquisite. His presentation, which was inspired by... Um, Oh, the Audrey Hepburn movie, P Pygmalia, yeah. when she went to the races and everyone was in black and white. Black and, and I just thought that was absolutely marvelous because it was original interpretation and, and beautiful and avant-garde. So he, I, for me, he nailed it. I thought that was the most beautiful work tonight. So, yeah, I think coming up with ideas is critical because you've got to constantly reinvent yourself. So what you did last year is last year. It's what are you going to do tomorrow that's important. It always seems to me that we are, uh, the, although we feel like we're reinventing ideas, these, these ideas are coming from the past. Uh, are, are we all going back into the past? Are we bringing all them forward and then changing it around a little bit, making it our own? H how's that working in your mind? Well, fashion designers, designers definitely do dip into the past uh, with sure. a lot of retro work. And right, th the next season coming up is the wider shoulder pad, yep. the 1940s oh, yeah. influence, and the 1980s. And 80s got its inspiration from the 40s. So now we're seeing 40s and 80s mixed together. You can't look at hair in isolation. Hair is part of fashion. Don't so it's me. very you have to be mindful as to what the silhouette is, what the mm -hmm. designers are creating, and what's going to stick. And there are so many micro-trends, it's hard to determine, okay, 
Will that trend stick? Will women wear shoulder pads? If they're wearing shoulder pads, how is the silhouette of hair going to change? So you have to think about all of these things and thank goodness it evolves and changes because that's what keeps us fresh. So while, you know, I have a book which was my college book. It's the first 5,000 years of hairdressing. Mm. And when I look at some of the footage in this book, the images, whether it be in men's hairstyling or women's, you can see, oh my goodness, page boy, that was the 12th century. And hey, there's a girl in Italian Vogue wearing a page boy. Okay, it's slightly different, but you know, there's only so many shapes and silhouettes that are commercially viable. So I think that the smart person can take from the past, but give it a today sensibility so you don't see like, oh, okay, that's, that's the look. And people are saying, well, you know, with Farrah Fawcett tragically passing away with that yeah. lovely Farrah hairstyle, um, you know, you, you think, well, okay, will that trend come back in again as, as a, an interest and a remembrance of that beautiful, wonderful woman? And, and I'm sure that we will come back in, but with a different sensibility. Sure. So that's what it's about. Keep it fresh. It's probably here already. Do you see anybody that's that daring out there? Anybody that influences you? I mean, you influence everybody. Is, who, who's there right now that's influencing you? I, I, um, I think one of the most extraordinary hairdressers in the world is Eugene uh, Solomon who's an, unfortunately I was, I, I worked a lot with him uh, when I was in England, and Angelo Sumanera, who is an extraordinary hairdresser. He's also based in the UK. And there are some great editorial hairdressers who are based in New York. I, I get probably more of my inspiration from the editorial hairdressers um, and uh, just looking at what they're doing. But it's not only hair that inspires me, it's outside of the business too. But there are some amazing hairdressers. Well, a lot of things must inspire. If you're getting into the internet, a lot of things inspire you. I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good luck Keep, to you. Oh, thank you. Good luck to you. We'll work together someday, yeah. okay? SlimeGalaxy.com. Vivian McKinder. Lifetime Achievement Award. This is awesome stuff. <laughs> See you.